everybody. Uh, I am Sean Cooley from Mapped. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, what we call an independent data layer. Can everybody hear me fine? The audio is like very directional here. Uh, so we are an independent data layer for people, places, and things. Uh, and if you look inside of a typical commercial building, there are now millions of data points uh, in thousands of devices spread throughout those buildings. Um, there is a lot going on inside of these, uh, across the places and the people uh, that are moving around, as well as all of those things that are tracking and controlling things like HVAC, lighting, fire safety, elevators, parking systems, on and on. <clears throat> the demand for this data is increasing, uh, and many of these use cases are critical. If you look at owners and operators of these commercial buildings, uh, they're often trying to solve things like ESG, predictive maintenance. Uh, they have investment goals that they're trying to use the data for. Uh, if you look at the tenants, the tenants oftentimes are looking at the same sorts of ESG things. If you think of a multinational company that is in hundreds of locations around the world, uh, they're trying to gather this information across all of their portfolio and understand where that data is coming from and how to make use of it to better run their environment. Uh, vendors now trying to optimize their businesses around the data that comes out of these. If you think of a cleaning crew that goes into the building at the end of the day, oftentimes companies like ABM are contracted to send a certain number of cleaners to every building every day. And in reality, especially post-COVID, when the buildings have less people in them, uh, they can send fewer cleaners and still produce the same outcome. Uh, and then on the compliance side, we're just seeing an incredible number of states and cities starting to demand data from these buildings. Uh, if you look in New York now, there's little signs on the front of every building. Uh, we see similar things coming out in LA, Chicago, DC has BEPS, which has some pretty hefty fines attached for not providing this data. Uh, and so the data is really becoming more and more important for everything that happens. Uh, getting this data is incredibly hard. If you look in one of these buildings, uh, we're now looking at about 50 years of automation that goes into these. Protocols like Modbus came out in the late 60s uh, and are still being heavily used in a lot of these environments. There are thousands of system integrators that come in and integrate these devices and connect to these things. And these system integrators aren't trying to make the data easy to get to, right? They're trying to make the elevators go up and down. They're trying to make the HVAC turn on and off. Uh, and so when you come in later and try and get the data, uh, it's usually pretty difficult to do. Many, many thousands of unique devices uh, across these environments. Uh, and these devices are made by hundreds of vendors. And then lastly, on the protocol side, you know, again, I mentioned Modbus earlier, we're dealing with about 20 protocols that are pretty broadly used uh, across the industry. Um, BACnet obviously being the, the most popular one these days, but we do still see things like Clipsal CBUS. Uh, we see KNX in Europe. Uh, we see a lot of Modbus and CAN. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on inside of here. Um, many of these systems still very, very siloed across these environments. Different system immigrators installing and configuring each one of these environments. Uh, and then now we're just seeing hundreds of cloud-first vendors. So in access controls, if you think of companies like Brivo or OpenPath, Castle Systems, uh, you start looking in occupancy. Companies like Butler, VergeSense uh, doing occupancy data, Density doing occupancy data. These companies are all sending the data directly to the cloud, which means yet you have another API, another protocol that you've got to deal with to try to get that data. Um, everybody's looking for the same thing. They're trying to connect this data. They're trying to bring together all of those systems to get those transformational insights. It is very, very difficult to do this for even a single building, uh, and it is impossible to do this really at scale when you're trying to do it manually. Uh, as I mentioned, the map platform uh, is an independent data layer. We bring together people, places, and things really from any data source into a single API. Uh, our entire focus is the discovery, extraction, and normalization of data. Uh, we normalize this data into something called Brick Schema. Um, you may have heard of Brick Schema in the, out there in the ontology space along with things like Haystack, Real Estate Core, Digital Building Ontology from Google. Um, we are, uh, at, the, at the moment, the, the first company focused solely on that data extraction, uh, discovery, and normalization. Uh, our platform is pretty easy to use. Uh, if you're trying to get in-building data, uh, it starts by connecting that data through either a physical gateway, we make a small physical gateway that can go into the environment, or a virtualized version of that gateway. So our virtualized version runs on Iodium, which is now Vue 
Secure Edge. Runs on Azure Stack Edge. It'll run on anything that has Docker, Kubernetes, or VMware uh, type support. Um, we also have a cloud-hosted version. Uh, we host it in the cloud, and we can come in through an IPsec tunnel uh, into your environment to pull that data uh, out of it. Uh, our actual product is about helping you to understand where your data is coming from, uh, where it's originating, where the devices are, uh, and where it's going along the way. Uh, what you see in the middle is what we call the spatial inventory. So again, we do people, places, and things. Uh, the places piece of this, we can pull in floor plans from a, a number of different formats. We can also pull them from a slice out of something like Matterport or like a true view if somebody's come through and done a 3D scan of the space. Um, we overlay the location of where those devices are throughout your environment, and we show you their status. And this is a status of whether they're actively sending data or maybe have fallen offline for some reason. Um, the data flow view uh, that you see on the left side here, uh, this is all of your data sources down the left, all the brick system types in the middle that those data sources have been mapped to, uh, and then the various applications that are making use of those, those data sources. Um, when you grant applications access to your data, uh, you get to choose both based on location, so where is the device located. Um, we have customers who, for example, might have an FAA office on the first floor of their building uh, and a WeWork on the second, third, and fourth floors. WeWork wants access to the data. FAA doesn't want them getting their data, right? And so you have to choose where that data is coming from, what system types you want to share with each individual vendor, uh, and how you allow that to happen. Um, the last piece is our actual product. Uh, we are an API company uh, powering software developers and data scientists. Uh, this query here is what's referred to as GraphQL. Uh, this GraphQL query uh, says for this particular building on the third floor, I want all the names and geo shapes of the spaces that I have inside of that. Right? And so as a developer, you don't really care whether this came from a DXF file or a slice out of Matterport. You just want the answer to your question. That same thing applies to temperatures, occupancy, other things that we pull out of the data. Um, from an automation standpoint, we are uh, doing a bunch of different things inside of the building. One of them we call active discovery. So we go out and scan the network looking for devices, uh, IP by IP, BACnet ID by BACnet ID, looking for devices inside of the environment. We also do passive discovery, uh, so we can actually sniff traffic moving across networks, pull that data off the wire. Uh, the passive discovery is really useful making sure we don't increase the load on the environment. Um, I'm going to skip through some of the details of this, but uh, feel free to stop by our booth and we can uh, get into more details. Um, the, the short version is, as we find that data and pull it out of the environment, we're doing a lot to enrich the data, to stitch it together, to move it into brick schema and really get things going. Um, today, going into a single building uh, might take you several months to go through and map this data. Um, the man time that's spent on that ends up adding up pretty quickly. Uh, we do this in what we call 444. So it takes us about four minutes uh, to connect a cloud data source. It takes us about four hours to discover everything inside of an environment uh, once you've plugged in one of our gateways or spin up a virtual gateway. Uh, it takes us about four days for our machine learning to go through and map all the points that are inside of that system and really start stitching things together. And we do this for $1,000 a building a month. You can see the full pricing up on our website. Uh, just as a case study, uh, this is a 200,000 square foot building up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, if you see in, the, uh, in this column here, uh, they had three system integrators spend 15 weeks to produce these results. Uh, we did the same thing in four days uh, with slightly better output coming from the data. Uh, our self-serve is now live. You can sign up for an account online, start connecting data sources from the cloud for free. Uh, make use of the APIs, uh, and if you reach out to us, we can also give you access to the sandbox, which puts a couple virtual buildings into your environment so you can actually start making queries against them. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much.